All right, hello everyone. It's been a long time since I've done one of these videos or any videos at all on YouTube. So we are going to look at the 2024 silly season, but before we do so, I figure it only makes sense to very quickly look at my predictions for the 2023 season. We're going to go through this very fast and I'm probably going to need a lot of water while doing this. So let's very quickly look at 2023. Oh, let's get that over here. <clears throat> so there was a lot of empty seats. Hamilton, uh, Stroll technically, Sonoda, DeVries, Sargent, Magnuson, Hulkenberg, Bottas, Joe. There was a lot of unconfirmed things. It ended up being one of the more boring season, but let's look at the predictions that I made. So I think so I think I started with the teams. Yeah, I don't show teams where it was already confirmed there was making changes, so we're only showing teams where there was supposed to be changes. So I predicted Alonzo and Stroll would stay. I was correct. <clears throat> Whoa. <clears throat> I predicted Hamilton and Russell would stay together for 2024. I was correct. Um, <clears throat> I think this is where I started to predict changes. So DeVries and Sonoda. I predicted DeVries would stay and Sonoda would be out. Turns out I got the exact opposite. Wow, my voice is going. Oh, uh, if you guys can't tell, I am sick right now a little bit. It's not fun. Moving on for Williams. Ignore the bad edit of Sargent. I acknowledged that last year, but Albon and Sargent, I predicted that Sargent would go, and I thought they would bring in Valtteri Bottas. Definitely didn't happen. They still got Albon and Sargent. Almost no teammate changes. Alfa Romeo, so I predicted Bottas was going to go. So I predicted Kevin Magnussen would come and fill his seat. Obviously, Kevin Magnussen's still at Haas. Next up, at Haas. So since I figured Magnussen was going to go, I thought Logan Sargent would move over there. Again, no changes. It was boring season. Yeah. It was a very, very, very boring season. Anyways, let's get into... Our 2024 silly season. Obviously, there's a little bit of a hint going on over there. But um, let's get into it. So looking at all of the empty seats for this season, there is a ton. Um, starting at Red Bull, Perez isn't guaranteed. Hamilton's just move over to Ferrari. I was going to make this video, but he just kind of triggered me into forcing me to do it. Um, Norris and Piastri at McLaren are confirmed, so we're not even going to look at McLaren at all. Same as how we didn't last year. Um, Aston Martin, Stroll's technically unconfirmed. Alonso's up. Uh, Alpine, both drivers. Williams, both drivers. Haas, both drivers. Racing Bulls, both drivers. Stake, both drivers. There is a ton of empty seats, so there was a lot to work on here. So... I believe I start with, again, the teams where I'm expecting essentially no changes. Or at least the one confirmed change we already have. Lewis Hamilton to Ferrari. We already know that's taking place. So I just kind of put that in. I didn't really need to go over Carlos' signs there. So let's move on to the next team, which is Aston Martin. I once again expect Alonso and Stroll to be at Aston Martin in 2025. Obviously, Stroll is going to retain his seat unless he decides to walk away from the sport. And the only potential option I would see like Alonso moving to is like Red Bull or Mercedes. Both of which I don't I don't see either team really going for Alonso. I don't think I don't think either teams really want competition for their number one drivers with Max or uh, Russell right now, so I think they're happy to stay status quo go looking for a number two With all that said Aston Martin kind of just seems the the fit for Alonso to stay there That brings us to Red Bull and their current lineup where at this point now each team we go through I am making changes I'm gonna start with the more obvious teams first because it's probably the worst guarded secret that Red Bull I think they want in Daniel Ricciardo. It is Sergio Perez's seat to lose, and I think he will lose it. So I've put Daniel Ricciardo in there for 2025 because I think Red Bull can carry this championship with Verstappen by itself. 
but Horner and Max have such a love for Daniel that it's going to be easy to slot him in. There isn't really anything to debate there. Next up brings, of course, Racing Bulls. With Ricardo out, that leaves one spot open. Well, granted, technically two spots, but I think Sonoda sticks around and Liam's, Liam Lawson then slots in for a first full season with, uh, within F1. And then moving on to our very next team, what do we got? We got Haas. So Haas is in a situation where, based off of the announcement they made today, it almost seems like they're trying to line up a rookie driver for next year. So at least one driver is going to be going, but I actually decided to let both of the drivers go. With Gunther Steiner gone, there is a complete turnover. I think that gets turned over for the end of the year. I think Kevin Magnussen, he's just kind of worn out his time within F1. And Nico Hulkenberg, I don't think he's as favored within the team, considering how much he has bashed the upgrades, and meanwhile, the previous technical director in charge of the upgrades is now team principal. So I think there might be a, um, potentially some bad blood there, and I think the team decides to go in a new direction. So I've decided to bring in the rookie driver that they're testing, as well as Sergio Perez. So if Perez is out of Red Bull, but wanting to stay in F1, I think Haas has been the best fit for him. There's He brings money to the table, which Haas wants. It's an American team. Haas is gonna love him there as he's super popular in America with of course his Mexican connections. And then Oliver Behrman, he's set to run what? Like, was it four or, or six? Six FP1s they're planning for him? Something ridiculous. So it seems very obvious that whether it's for like the Ferrari that's pushing for it or Haas is just wanting to get him ready for next season. It feels like Ollie, Ollie Behrman is kind of getting prepped to take a role within F1. So I've slotted him in there. He had a decent rookie campaign in F2. Um, I think he could be making a push for the title this year. It's definitely possible. No guarantees, of course, but it's not out of the realm of possibilities. As far as the next team goes, what do I have there then? I think I put, ah, Stake. One of the worst names, but not the worst name. Clearly I'm calling the one team Racing Bulls because I refuse to acknowledge the other name. Um, so Stake F1 team, they've got Bottas and Joe, both seats of course empty for next season. Similar to Haas, I decided to do a complete turnover with this team. Not necessarily for reasons of they want to move on from both drivers. Almost a little bit, their hand is just kind of being forced. Where there's options that are almost like too good to pass up on. So I think the goal for the one obvious choice that's been rumored probably for I think two years. Carlos signs and then bringing in rookie Theo Porcher. Or Theo Porcher, however you want to pronounce it. So... Carlos, I think the only real, the obvious seats for him that he would have been potential candidates for, again, similar to Fernando, are Red Bull and Mercedes. I don't think either team really has anything against Carlos. I think Red Bull just has such an alliance with uh, Daniel that they'll want Daniel, they'll consider Daniel the number one option if it's not Checo. And at the same time, I think I think Red Bull is going to wait so long into the season to make that decision. I don't think Carlos is wanting to wait. And then, so that leaves Mercedes. I, I don't think, Mer um, I don't think Mercedes would consider Carlos the top option and similar idea. They might wait through the season. I think Carlos will probably want to nail a deal down as quick as possible, such as he's done in the past whenever there's been opportunities granted to him. So I think he makes that move to Audi, or stake for now, quite early. So I think he'll jump over, and then at this point, Sauber, they just do not want to waste poor chair. They don't want to let him go. So I think they bring him up to fill that second seat. So they have themselves a very solid, experienced driver once again, as well as a very, very good rookie this time around. I know when it was Gio Benazzi, I don't know how highly he was rated back then. I, was, I, I, I wasn't I, was following the sport at that time. 
and there was obviously not, I wouldn't say controversy, but it wasn't the most ideal pick bringing in Guan Yu Zhou. So I think this kind of is probably their first like turnover in lineups where it's just like, yep, nope, this is, this is a good pairing. You're not just kind of taking who is left over. Although with Carlos, you are a little bit, but it's not the case of like, Valtteri Bottas or Kimi Raikkonen where it's just kind of like the guy discarded. I think Carlos legitimately has top team options, but I think he'll end up at Audi. Whereas with Valtteri, I don't think he had top team options to go to. Kimi, I don't think he had top team options to go to. And then Theo, he's obviously an extremely top rookie. They just haven't had that since Charles. So that'll be a very good lineup for them. Brings us to our next team of Williams, of Alex Albon, who's been heavily linked to that Mercedes seat, and Logan Sargent, who decided to crash his car basically every weekend the final half of last season. So I think my wording going into that kind of makes it clear what I think at least about one of those drivers. So I think for Williams, I think Sargent is gone. I think Albon stays. I don't think he gets that Mercedes seat he was wanting, and I wouldn't be shocked if he's in the conversation for Red Bull, but he doesn't want to go back to Red Bull. I don't think that happens. So I think Sargent is gone. He's done his opportunity. It is what it is. The only other options for Alex I could see maybe is Alpine, but I think he's got himself solidified enough in Williams that he decides to stay there. And then with Williams' other seat, I think they've got a couple options. I was debating hardcore, basically whether to go like Kimi Antonelli, uh, who I've put in the seat clearly, or like someone like Frederick Vesti. Because I think the ties to Mercedes and James Valls and everything like that, I can see, I, and I know they don't want to be associated as a Mercedes junior team, but I think those connections are impossible to ignore. So I think James Valls himself is probably very high, very, very high on Kimi Antonelli, as well as Vesti. I could see him going with either of those options. Heck, I could have seen him go... Okay, sorry, I just saw a reflection off of like my wrist. It freaked me out a bit. Another potential option, I would think, uh, since he's no longer at stake, I could have seen like Bottas maybe filling this role. If... Um... This might be too early for Antonelli. I very well think it might be too early for Antonelli at this time, but this guy has been so hyped that it's also impossible to ignore that it could be a very real possibility he gets into F1 by 2025 when he's an 18 year old. It might happen. Brings us on to the next team, Mercedes. So, Obviously, Mercedes is losing Hamilton. It's mind-blowing, groundbreaking news. And then, who the heck replaces Lewis Hamilton? There isn't anyone who can replace Lewis Hamilton. Let's just be real about that. So, I think Toto wants to have some control. I think there was heavy consideration for quite a few drivers. Like, who, who the heck could I possibly think of that could have replaced Lewis or that they decide to replace Lewis with? I think they'll consider Perez, I think they'll consider Sainz, I think they'll consider Alonso, Ocon, Gasly, Albon. Heck, I think they would take an outside look at Ricardo. Maybe, maybe bring back Valtteri Bottas. I know in the past, Mercedes has proven that they had interest in Nico Hulkenberg too. And then there's been rumors of Sebastian Vettel returning to the sport to race for Mercedes. What I decided with is that Toto probably wants to have some control in his drivers. And he's always shown extreme loyalty. So I think Toto brings in Esteban Ocon. He managed him before. Ocon was the reserve driver for Mercedes a few years back. I think he gets brought back to the team now as a main driver to pair with George Russell. It could be a little contentious, but Toto knows how to lay down the law, and I think he knows that he can control both of these drivers, and that both drivers are very much quality. So I think that's the pairing he decides to go with. I think Vettel is 
you can't control Vettel. Vettel's going to do his own thing. Same with Alonso. Alonso is a bit of a loose cannon. Alex Albon, I think Toto legitimately would like Alex Albon. But there's just that bit of the unknown and the Red Bull history. And I think it's probably a toss-up between Ocon and Albon. Between the two of them, I think Toto just takes his history and loyalty to Ocon. Gasly, I just don't think the consideration is all that there. Same goes for Ricardo, who I mentioned. Uh, who else did I mention? Same for Hulkenberg. I think for Hulkenberg to even get consideration would be crazy. And then there's the outside shot. Maybe maybe Toto shows loyalty to Nick DeVries and brings him to Mercedes. I would love for that to happen. Or Stoffel Van Dorn. That would be amazing. I would. The internet would freak out. I would love it. So with that being the case, that just leaves one team with an open seat, Alpine. So, but well, actually, technically, they've got two open seats, but clearly, based off of my wording so far, I'm thinking that Gasly will stay there. I think there isn't really a seat for him to move up or sideways or anything along those lines. I think he stays within Alpine. Uh, I, I, I don't know if they'll keep both Ocon and Gasly. There's just, and Gasly's had some issues within the team this last season, but I don't think he really has the options to move around, so I think he stays. Now, for his teammate, I've put in Guan Yu Zhou, or sorry, Zhou Guan Yu. I still keep on referring to how they talked about him in F2. It's been years, but I don't care. Um, so, Zhou, I think his previous connections as an Alpine junior. Like, it's not even when he did end up going to race for Alfa Romeo. I don't think it was so much the case of him, like, wanting out of the Alpine Junior team as much as there was a seat available. They're not going to deny him a seat in F1. I wouldn't be surprised if there's absolutely zero bad blood there. Joe's probably happy to have gone through the academy. Alpine would probably be happy to put him back through. So with all of that being the case, that's why I think... Zhou would be the driver to go back to Alpine. I know they've got drivers like uh, Jack Doohan in their, um, what's it called? Jack Doohan in the reserve role. And there is the potential for Victor Martins as well. But I don't know if either of them quite make the cut. I think Doohan's starting to focus more on WEC, if I'm remembering correctly. And then Martins, we'll see how he does. He's I wouldn't say he's not a rookie in F2 anymore, but it's an entirely new car and everyone is new to it. So we'll see if he happens to adapt and perform very, very well in F2. I could definitely see him getting uh, an Alpine seat or a seat in F1 in general for Victor Martins. He's very good. As granted, I think he's technically one of the older drivers in F2 right now. Since he, I know he did a couple extra seasons, I want to say in Freca and F3. But yeah, I think that completes the lineup. So looking back at all of the empty seats before, obviously we didn't talk about McLaren since there was no changes there. Norris and Piastri are both locked in through 2026, I want to say. And then here's the rest of the changes that got made. So obviously some of them might not stick. Probably a lot of them won't. I've been very, very wrong in the past and I expect to be very wrong again about some of these. So let me know what people think down below and we'll see. And in the future, um, yeah, we're going to do some more videos. I want to do some more power rankings for F1, F2, and F3 from the last season. Make some predictions for this next season. But I wanted to get the silly season video out right away because Lewis Hamilton spoiled the fun and basically made it an urgent video to produce. Anyways. For those who aren't already, and you can kind of see my socials have been going down below me, I am actually recording this on Twitch right now. Anyone who is watching me live got to see this very early. Um, so, yeah, that's it. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. I will see you around for the next one.